Hello, I am the Cube Master, and I'll be showing you how to solve Rubik's Cubes that are bigger than this 3x3 here. Along with the algorithms needed to solve a regular 3x3, other algorithms are also needed in order to solve the bigger cubes. However, these three algorithms can be used to solve pretty much every cube past a 3x3. The notation for these three algorithms is a little different. For example, capital letters will represent an outer layer turn, while lowercase letters will represent an inner layer turn. If an algorithm asks you to turn both an uppercase layer and a lowercase, turn both of those layers in the same direction. The first algorithm to learn is an algorithm that I like to call the flip 15 because it consists of 15 turns and it flips pieces around. To perform the flip 15 algorithm, take the right two sides of the cube and rotate it 180 degrees. Take the back side of the cube, rotate that 180 degrees. Take the top side of the cube, rotate it 180 degrees. Then rotate the left sides of the cube down or clockwise. Rotate the top 180 degrees. Rotate the right side down or counterclockwise. Rotate the top 180 degrees. Then rotate the right two sides up, followed by 90 degrees clockwise, followed by rotating the top 180 degrees the front 180 degrees, then you rotate the right two sides up, the front 180 degrees, the left two sides up or counterclockwise, and then you turn the back side 180 degrees, and then you turn the right two sides 180 degrees. The whole point of that algorithm is to flip these two edge pieces around something that you cannot do on a 3x3 three three, but you kinda have to do it sometimes on a bigger cube. As you can also see this, these two edges and these two edges also switched places and this corner switched place with this corner. Next up is the edge of 11 algorithm. I call it this because it consists of 11 moves and it switches edge pieces around on odd cubes. To perform the edge of 11 algorithm Take the front side of the cube, rotate it 180 degrees, take the right two sides of the cube, rotate them 90 degrees clockwise, take the down side of the cube, rotate it twice, take the right two sides of the cube, rotate them 90 degrees counterclockwise, take the front side of the cube, rotate it 180 degrees, take the top of the cube, rotate that 180 degrees, take the front side again, rotate it 180 degrees, then take the left two sides, rotate them 90 degrees clockwise, then you take the back of the cube, rotate it 180 degrees, then you take the left two sides of the cube again, rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise, then you take the front of the cube, and rotate it 180 degrees. What that algorithm did is it took these groups of edge pieces and it took the middles and switched them. See these blue and orange pieces are missing their blue and orange middle piece which is over here and same with the blue and red piece right here. As you can also see it also switched this corner with this corner, this corner with this corner, and these three edges with these three edges. The next algorithm we'll be learning is what I like to call the swap out 7 because it swaps out some edge pieces and it consists of only 7 moves and it's just a cool algorithm. To perform the swap out 7 algorithm you first take the top two sides of the cube rotate them 180 degrees in either direction take the left two sides rotate them 180 degrees then take the top side rotate that 180 degrees then take this middle left layer right here and turn that 180 degrees. Then you take the top again, rotating it 180 degrees. Rotate the whole left side, the left two layers, rotate that 180 degrees. Then rotate the top two later, layers 180 degrees. As you can see what that algorithm did is it switched these two edge pieces with these two edge pieces without touching or moving any other piece on the cube. It's a very handy algorithm. All big Rubik's cubes can be solved the same way. 
even this gigantic intimidating looking 7x7. Seven seven. And the first step is to solve these middle pieces in the middle of the cube using your own imagination. Once you've solved all the middle pieces with your God-given ingenuity, then you can begin solving all these edge pieces. To solve the edges, you're going to have to again use your own creativity to line up the pieces you need and create the edge groups. And then you just have to find a way to slide them out and put the centers back to their place without destroying the cube. But Cube Master, what if I run into a situation like this? Well, young Padawan, if you run into a situation where this piece and this piece need to be switched without changing anything else in the cube, that is where your Edge of Eleven algorithm comes into play. But what if the edges are flipped like this? What do I do then? Well, that's an easy one. You can use the Flip 15 algorithm on just those edges. Once all the centers and all the edge pieces are all ready to go, you can then commence solving it like a regular 3x3, three three, treating these as one edge piece and this as one middle piece. But what if this happens? Well, if you need to flip an edge group li over, like that over, then that's where the Flip 15 algorithm comes in again. And if you run into a situation like this, that means it's time to perform the Swap Out 7 algorithm and start the last layer over again. Once you master the big cubes, you can impress all your friends at your gigantic cube solving skills. Don't hit like unless you enjoyed the video and don't subscribe unless you want more. Goodbye.